Okay, thank you very much for coming to our talk. I know you have a tremendous selection, so it's very hard to choose. I'm going to talk about uh, lessons learned writing a PDF to JavaFX converter. I'm going to talk primarily about NetBeans, and then my colleague Leon is going to take over and talk about JavaFX and the stuff we've learned comparing PDF to JavaFX, SVG, and HTML5. Okay, first of all, let me introduce myself. That's uh, how I like to see myself. Um, Leon and Linda will privately tell you afterwards. That's more how they see me. I'm a full-time Java developer. I have a day job developing IDR Solutions PDF library. I use Eclipse IDEA and NetBeans on a regular basis. I frequently swear at all of them. My ideal IDE sort of combines features from all three of them. I've written plugins for Eclipse IDEA and NetBeans. That's what Google would call our 20% time. So we have free plugins, we develop them, we play with cool technologies like JavaFX to see how we can use them elsewhere in the main product. But the plugins are all free, we give them away under an LGPL license with the source code. I have a degree in medieval history, which is absolutely useless for this type of work, but normally gets a smile from developers. So if you have any questions about 13th century medieval European history, please, please do come up to me afterwards, don't be afraid. I probably know the answers. I've been a speaker at Java One, Sabold, and I've also done talks at Redgate Software's Business of Software Conference. Uh, my talks have a reputation for kittens, so you will, if you came to our Glassfish talk yesterday, in my talk in Leon, you will notice a few um, pictures. Uh, today is also my birthday, so I'm feeling really old, so if I have to go and have a little nap in the middle of the talk, please forgive me. Okay, first of all, we have to have the obligatory denial so no kittens were harmed or neglected during the making of this presentation. If you'd see, like to see lots of kittens, I have a talk called Asteroid Impact, Are You a Large Lizard or Small and Furry, which I did for Redgate Software, their Business of Software conference, which is absolutely full of kittens. Let's move on to NetBeans PDF plugin. As you can see, we've got NetBeans here. It's displaying a PDF, and we've taken the NetBeans structure we tried to reuse the, all the NetBeans concepts. So we've added some buttons to the toolbar. We're displaying the PDF using our open source version of our library in a big window. We've got some buttons on that as well. I've kept some buttons on the swing panel. Um, we've also used the navigator panel to display some thumbnails. And we've got a search window down at the bottom. OK, there are two different types of what you might term NetBeans application. There's the one that we've written, which is a plugin. And that's extending NetBeans ID itself. So it's adding new functionality. You can download it. And not only can you now develop in JavaFX and uh, C, PHP, and so forth, but you can now view the PDF natively within the IDE. And the reason we originally wrote it was to allow you to view documentation and PDF file formats internally in a pure Java solution. You can also create what's called an RCP. So you don't have an IDE there, your users fire it up, it doesn't look like NetBeans, you can't write Java in it, it doesn't have any cool, necessarily have any cool features, it's just an application which uses NetBeans platform. Uh, I sometimes say the difference, it's a bit like the difference between, right, the, sorry, the difference between using NetBeans platform and pure Java is a bit like the difference between coding in Vi and coding in something like NetBeans, Eclipse or IntelliJ. You get a lot more functionality, a lot more high-end stuff, and that's what I'm going to show you throughout my half of the talk. I would also say that NetBeans is a very viable platform, not just for new applications, but for migrating existing code onto we started with a Swing application, and we've turned it into a plugin. And I'm going to give you some reasons why you might want to, to take your existing code and make it an RCP or a plugin. Why would you want to migrate existing code? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, there's a lot of new functionality to enhance the application. And you can get rid of a lot of your existing code because functions already in, are in NetBeans. You can rip out all that old swing code you wrote. All those hours spent working out how to set up border layout can all go, and you can plug straight into NetBeans and use it. You can also use all of the GUI packaging platform problems. They've already been solved in NetBeans. So what you can end up with is an awful lot more functionality, spending an awful lot less time writing it. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Sorry, you don't see age catching up with me. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can take functions and use them, and I'll show you some of the ones we've done later. It also lets you become part of the NetBeans ecosystem, which is growing, has a very high visibility. 
NetBeans has come a long way since I first met it in 2005. In 2008, I came and gave, gave a talk on plugins, and I was heckled by somebody who was clearly a NetBeans developer because the only NetBeans people at conferences in those days were obviously working for the development team. So let me put the record straight. In 2012, NetBeans is not just about Java, and it's not just an IDE. It's a fully featured platform. It is, in some respects, I tend to think of it as almost a souped-up super version of Java with a lot of additional GUI functionality for the desktop. It has a fast development pace. We've only got used to having 7.2 out when 7.3 is about to appear, and doubtless 7.4 will be following it shortly behind. It's also the first place many developments appear like JavaFX. One of the things that ex excites us very much about the Java platform is looking at functions we can take in JavaFX and things that we hadn't even considered, like multi-touch functionality on mobile devices. And NetBeans is offering us a platform to play with that, and our plugins giving us somewhere to experiment with it. Backward compatibility is very good. Despite NetBeans being, I think, some of the code's probably 10 years old, uh, we've had to change very little in our plugin. Here's our strategy for maintaining our code base in NetBeans. First of all, we like to make use of, use of new functionality. Part of the purpose of our code is, is to showcase what we do. So if there's something sexy, new, and exciting, we'd like it to appear. We keep updated with NetBeans and with our own versions of the code, so we're always testing the latest versions. Existing stuff, though, still works fine. We still have a layer.xml file. We still have some commands going through it. If it ain't broken, we don't want to fix it, unless, of course, we're going to lose a lot of code, have a nice new feature. What we decided to do was we wanted to add some new functionality. In 2011, we decided to add the ability to add some new toolbars. We wanted to add the convert PDF to JavaFX into the plugin. That was great, we thought. It would also make a really good talk. So we, had to, we would dive into layer XML and figure out all those shadow values. Or so we thought. OK, two things we wanted to add. First of all, we wanted to add toolbar functionality. So if you look at the screenshot, you can see I've got a little PDF icon with an FX. And you can see I've popped up a window to choose some PDF files external to NetBeans. I wanted control over icon, position, and context. I wanted to be able to control NetBeans. So NetBeans would pop up a window for me, tell me the file, allow me to display messages to the user, update the display, and then carry on. I also wanted a menu option. And you can see there under open, I've got convert PDF to JavaFX. I wanted it to be context sensitive so that if the user chose an XML file or a text file, they didn't get that option because it's not relevant. I wanted total control over its position in the menu. And I wanted full details of the selected file passed to me, which is going to need lots and lots of code and gives me lots of material to talk about. Nice set of slides, step-by-step -step line code. I know Gurjan's smiling because he knows <laughs> what comes next. OK, this is adding commands in a menu. OK, NetBeans now uses annotations. So in order to add a menu command to uh, my application, I have an implementation of ActionListener, which is the Jar PDF JavaFX converter. And you'll notice I have a couple of annotation commands. I've got an action ID, which tells me the category. I've actually got an ID for the object, and I've got some registration details, and a message, which is the convert PDF to JavaFX. And that's it in terms of adding a menu, adding a, adding a command to NetBeans. That will now appear on the menu when the PDF files are selected. I can tweak it myself manually, and you can see it's got position and separator. Let's hope for something better from the other one, otherwise it's going to be a short talk. OK, toolbar. Same again. Annotations. Uh, position, the annotation's slightly longer because it also allows me to have a graphics. So I've got a GIF as well. And then I've got the action listener, and I've also got some interesting other NetBeans functionality. So if you look at my constructor at the bottom, I've got an RP, which is a request processor, which allows NetBeans to do all the hard work of updating the system for me, and I can run it in a thread. Okay. And just to make it even easier for you, the way I created these files is I chose the package I want, which is Actions. I 
clicked new, and I chose action. And NetBeans gave me a set of wizards which generated the file, and then I can tweak it myself. So adding commands into NetBeans subsystem is, is so easy, even I can do it. OK, which gives me loads of time to do the demo. Okay, one thing I would like to show you is okay. what I will do is I will carry on and then I'll come back to if we've got time at the end after my colleague Leon's finished. Okay, I will. Uh, in there. Yeah. I will reboot my computer while Leon's talking, and hopefully, I can give the demo at the end because I was going to show you how the NetBeans files work. Okay, so the top reasons to use. It's an issue with the Mac, not with NetBeans. What I would like to do is to, to do the demo and to give you the top reasons. So what I'll do is hand over to my colleague Leon and we'll do the talk slightly out of order. talk a bit, bit about PDF to JavaFX. Um, I'm a developer at IDR Solutions. I work mainly on PDF to HTML5. I also do a bit of PDF to JavaFX, and we'll see a bit later, they're quite similar. Um, it's my first time at Java 1, also my first time speaking, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Cheers. 
Uh, so what is PDF? Uh, simply, which is a bit difficult, it's not really that simple, but it can contain vector graphics, raster images, text and fonts, which I suppose are the more simple things, and some more compli complicated things like forms, audio, video, and JavaScript. Um, if you ever tried reading the PDF spec, you'll know that it's very complicated, but very powerful. It's a good format, and it's a, big, a good comparison for JavaFX. Uh, so what is JavaFX? Well, as we all know, it's Java and it's cross-platform, so that's, that's nice. What can it contain? Well, it can do all the simple things like shapes, uh, images, and text. Some more advanced things, like forms, audio, and video, and some extra bits. So there's a lot of effects and transitions, a lot of eye candy, and lots and lots of nice interactive features for you to play with. So if you want to convert from PDF to, PDF to JavaFX, where do you start? Uh, we've got a, a library called JPiddle. It reads in PDF files and decodes them, so it can decode all the vector graphics, the images, everything in that list, basically. We convert them to abstracted Java objects. So from there on, we can do basically whatever we want, because we've got all the data, so we can output however we like. So we can output to HTML5, uh, to SVG, to JavaFX, or any other format that we feel will make a good format. So how do we do that? We've got our main class output display. That's got all the generic things in. And we've also got the other classes. So we've got HTML display, SVG display. And basically, they, they just do the, do the specifics. So HTML display outputs a HTML file. SVG does the SVG file. And the one that we're all interested in, the JavaFX file, gives us a Java file. So let's compare them. This is draw image. This is what draw image outputs. So for the HTML, we draw, we're drawing to a canvas. So we've got a nice draw image command, which, which we, we give the image to draw, the x and y position, and the width and height. The line below is just defining the image, the location of the image. Uh, for SVG displays, nice and simple, single line. We give it the image location, the x and y position, and the width and height. Now, the, the thing you'll probably quite you'll notice is that JavaFX is quite verbose. We've got to do all these things separately, so we can't do it in one line. We set the width, the height, the x and y, all in separate methods. Um, the image view has got another, another constructor, so you can set the image with a constructor, but you can't set the width, height, the x and y. So for JavaFX, you're, you have a scene, basically, and you're adding to the scene, which is what the last line was. So what about text? So, well, in HTML, you have your div tag with the text in, and you just give it, give it some CSS to style it. So you set the position and the styles. Similar to the image for SVG, single line, just give it the text you want to draw, the X and Y, and some styles as well. Uh, as with the image, for the Java effects, it's quite verbose again, but a little bit, little bit better. So you create your text, give it the X and Y, the text it is, and some styles, and add it to the scene. And lastly, what about draw shape? So I've made it into two columns because it's a bit longer. So for HTML, we're drawn to the canvas again. So it's just the move two commands, line two commands to draw the lines and the, the path commands, basically. And you can set the, the styles, so you can set widths and line caps and whatever you want to set. Uh, the SVG is very simple again, a single line. We can do the same thing. I think what I like most about the SVG is that the the move to the line two and the curves, it's just, you just do M, L, and C. So it's very compact, very simple. Uh, as again, JavaFX, quite verbose again. We're making new, new objects for the move to the line twos. But it's a similar thing. Now, why is that an issue? Well, as you may or, not, may or may not know, with Java, there's a limit with the method sizes. So you can't have methods too long, otherwise it will refuse to compile. Now, we can get around that by chaining methods, but it's not very nice and it's very complicated. But thankfully, JavaFX 2.2 was released recently, and they introduced something called Canvas, which is really handy. It's very similar to the HTML5 Canvas. So you can do lots of nice single-line things for the images and the text and the move to and the line to. It's no longer require the new objects. It's just a single line you draw into the Canvas, basically. So. That's very exciting and something to look at. So how else does uh, JavaFX compare? 
as I mentioned before, the, the canvas is very similar to the HTML5 canvas, but in fact, I think it's a little bit better. There's something that I've spent quite a lot of, lot of time trying to fix and trying to work around in HTML5 is that the canvas doesn't support both winding rules. Now, you're probably wondering what a winding rule is. Basically, it's just the rule that you, you give to fill a shape. So if you use even odd, you get the top one. If you use a non-zero, you get the bottom one. So if you, if you use the wrong one, you could end up with the shape filled incorrectly. So something that's really nice is that JavaFX does it perfectly. You can set the winding rule nicely. So how else does it compare? Well, JavaFX is nice and quick, which is very nice. Uh, I converted the PDF last week. It was 220,000 lines. Um, both Eclipse and NetBeans refused to open the file, but it compi compiled fine and FX loaded it in a couple of seconds, so it's very nice. Uh, JavaFX can be a self-contained jar. When you convert to HTML or, S or SVG, you get a big directory full of images and fonts and everything, and you need to zip that up, really, to send it to someone. With JavaFX, you can just do a self-contained jar to double-click on, so nice and easily, nice and easy. As I mentioned before, it implements both winding rules, so that's good. And filling shapes with patterns. In HTML5 and SVG, it's a bit complicated and a bit nasty and not very nice to do it. So we, we get around that by outputting to image then putting the image onto the canvas or into the SVG. Uh, JavaFX is nice and simple. You can do that with no effort. And you don't have to output to an image, so that's nice. So to sum up, I've got some positives and some negatives. So some positives, very powerful. You've probably sat through quite a few FX talks. I know how I have, and I've been very excited. It's easy, it's fun, faster coding. There's a lot of eye candy, a lot of things you can do, lots of transitions and things. It's, it's good fun. It's got a great future. There's lots of updates coming. So that's very good. The documentation's also very good, so you can go online, search for it, and lots of examples there. Um, we've seen the ensemble all the demos and gives you all the source code, so it's very easy to get the hang of and start doing it yourself. Um, it's now bundled with Java 7, so it's basically everywhere. So and it's also cross-platform, so very wide range of use for it. So some negatives. It's still new, it's not, not quite there yet. There's some features there that we'd like. Uh, for example, the printing, which I've mentioned further down. I know that's coming soon, so that's, that's good. Um, there's been lots of updates, which is a very nice thing, but it can also mean out-of-date support. So I went looking for the 2.2 documentation last week, and it was slightly difficult to find, but cause I wanted to download it, so it was in the blog post, nice link at the bottom. So it, Sometimes you get out-of-date support. But it can be very verbose. As I mentioned before and showed you, you can require quite a few lines, but with a canvas, that does fix it to some extent, so that's quite nice. I mentioned no printing and the iPad and iOS support. I'm not sure how that's going, but hopefully soon. So I'm going to end with something a little bit fun. Um, so one, one of those is a PDF, and one of those is it converted to JavaFX. So there's images there, there's shapes there, and the text has all been extracted. It's probably quite, <laughs> quite easy to see if there's something missing, but... <laughs> yeah. So the answer is... The left is the is the uh, JavaFX, and the right is the PDF. But it's very close, so it's a good representation of it, and compares very nicely. So, of course, the shameless plug. There's a reason a reason we're here. I mentioned before that all the hard work is done with the library to convert the PDF into the uh, abstracted Java objects. So that's our library called JPedal. We can do all the things on the right hand side and also convert to HTML5, SVG, and also JavaFX. So I was going to end with, the, with our contact info. That's our website. Our blog contains lots of PDF-related things and JavaFX, and lots of fun things we find when debugging some PDF files as well. And we've got a stand in the exhibition hall at 5111. So come and talk to us about all these things. Uh, thanks for attending. Uh, Mark, how's it going? We're ready to have another try. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, I'm running the latest version of 7.3 here. Um, just to... Okay, so what you can see is you can see we've got um, a PDF displayed in the window. I was going to mention earlier, I thought one of the interesting things about uh, NetBeans is that you can actually... 7.3. One of the interesting things about NetBeans is that you can communicate between windows or you can actually get it to use the, um, you can add the, the contents internally. So you can actually just put your entire Swing application into an existing window, not make any changes and just add new functionality. One thing that's also quite nice is you can see I quit it, deliberately quit it and reloaded it. You can see I had a file called test2 PDF. Uh, NetBeans has actually cached that information, saved the file so that if you reopen it, it then reloads it in the state that you left it. Okay, so we've now got the PDF there. Got, got thumbnails, and we've got a find window. So, okay, and it would be really nice if we could take the PDF. That's the conversion. I've taken the liberty of doing it offline, given my machine's behavior. So let's see what that would look like within JavaFX. And again, one of the cool things of JavaFX is we can do this nice fade. So if I change pages, we've used one of the JavaFX transitions. And the actual, the actual code, at the moment we are using a scene. Um, one of the interesting things about JavaFX is they keep adding new features to it. So we're currently looking at recoding it to run on the canvas. But there's already a high level of functionality even before they brought out 2.2. And just to show you very briefly. Okay, so the top reason to use NetBeans in 2012 First of all, you can build on top of Swing, and you can leverage JavaFX. So we've shown you a lot of existing Swing functionality. We've taken our PDF code, we've plugged it straight into NetBeans window. We've moved some of the wind functionality into other NetBeans windows. And at the same time, we're starting to play with JavaFX, um, add these transitions and so forth. So it's a nice way to transition your existing Swing application into something uh, more modern, more sexy. It's easy to link an existing Swing code, as I've already said, and you've seen the existing Swing app. It has lots of high-level functionality. Um, you can, for example, have the request processor so that when you're doing something, you will get a pop-up. You can have pop-up windows, or you can have a message down at the bottom. So rather than just seeing the message you normally get to tell you the code's compiling, it can tell you that it's converting. And in our conversion, it'll tell you which page it's reached. So there's easy ways to, to provide lots of updates to the user. Again, I've mentioned the packaging tools. One of the coolest things I think about the packaging tools is that it only places what you need into the package. So if you're not using lots of functionality, you won't find that your user has to download the whole NetBeans IDE just for your Hello World application. So some tips on integrating a Swing application into NetBeans. One, try to keep the NetBeans GUI and business logic as separate as possible. That also allows you to run parallel versions. So in our code, we have a class which provides all the Swing functionality. We have an equivalent within NetBeans, and we can just switch between them and effectively have a legacy version and our new NetBeans version. Ha again, have a Java class to abstract your functionality. Single point of contact. So all our PDF library calls are within a single class. We abstract functions on top of them. They're within the NetBeans code. That also makes it very easy for us to update it. And use the NetBeans high-level functionality. As I've said, you can have the request processor, you have the threading. There's also a function to allow you to update the display so that within the, the GUI, the file utils would, would pick up. Okay. And that completes our talk. We've left some time at the end for questions if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Yes. Yep. Uh, I was wondering why you chose to uh, do it to more Java source code as opposed to doing like FXML, the implementation of FXML. 
we, we've been doing XML, F, we have been doing FXML as well, and there are also a couple of constructs that some of the Java FX team have done where you can have a builder and you can basically chain an awful lot of methods on top of that. Um, on, our, on our first implementation, we wanted a nice, clean source code where we could follow exactly what was going on, and also the user could follow it as well. We have an implementation which isn't quite complete yet where we also write it out to FXML. The, re the reason, as I say, is we wanted, we wanted it to look like Java and be pure Java. Do you have anything to, to add? Um, the FX as well is actually quite nice as well because you don't have the limit of the method sizes being too large, so it will compile fine and work fine. So, so was there a particular limitation in FX and all the No, no. I just didn't have room on the slides to include it. <laughs> so. Long term, I think FXML is a far more interesting technology because it's pure XML, but it's been the one that's been behind the Java FX. So if you wanted to start developing in Java FX, sorry, if you wanted to start developing with the technology, Java FX was really the place to start. It's also because it's more verbose, it's easier to get into it and understand it. There's more support online for Java FX as well. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much for coming along.